What's up guys, it's Dave. Since we're talking about the file system, I wanted to just make a little video about the types of files that Linux actually knows. Um, in a previous video I talked about how basically everything that happens in Linux is done through the file system, so whether it's devices or network connections or even uh, information, kernel information about the running processes, the interface is the file system. That's the common interface for almost everything on Linux. So I thought it would be good to just talk about a few types of files before we get too much into permissions and the nitty-gritty. Um, Linux knows about a couple different types of files. Obviously, regular files are one type. Directories are another. So these are permission bits, among other things. Um, so if I do a listing, a long listing, it'll show me user, group, creation date, or modified date, timestamp. And then permissions, which are three sets of potentially RWX, or any of them can be empty, which means dash. And that's read, write, execute permissions. But the very first character is what I want to talk about here. So ignore all this. I know it looks complicated. It'll look simple in a couple videos. Let's look at the very first one. Um, if there's nothing there, it's a regular file. So you can see these test files, they're just text files. They've got some text in there. So the first bit is empty. That's just a regular file. Links are another kind of Linux file. And they have the L at the beginning. Fairly obvious, uh, soft links, symbolic links, have an L. Directories have, surprise, a D. Now you can tell our shell is actually giving us different colors for these things, sort of based on the type it is. Um, these Bs here are block device files. Anything that can store information, basically, uh, will generally give you blocks. So a hard disk, you can see I, I grepped for SD, That'll find all the hard drives, all the SATA hard drives connected to my system. You can see they're all block devices. So this thing has some, some storage blocks that I can write to. That's basically how a hard disk works. And then you've got character device files. So you've got block and character device files. And that would be something like my mouse or my keyboard. There are a couple other ones like named pipes and local sockets that we won't get into too deeply. But let's cover these. These are the most important ones, basically. So the first one, directories, like you can see here, the this is a dear directory. Directories contain, they're basically references to the names of other directories inside of them and files. Whatever directory a file is in, that directory basically has information about the file. The file itself isn't so much uh, a named thing. Uh, likewise, you can have more than one reference to a file, so that if I say list this direct directory, we'll do a long listing. You can see this is just a regular file, just a regular file, nothing in that first bit. However, if I do a long listing on the desktop and look for the... Oops, and look for the link, you can see this is a symbolic link, which is basically just another name pointing to this file. It's not a reference, that would be a hard link. So if I said make a link, this is a symbolic link, a soft link. If I just made a link to that file, it would be just the way a parent directory refers to a file, just another reference to that file. For example, I can't do that for a non-existent file. But what I've created here is a soft link, or a symbolic link, and that is a link to some location. It doesn't matter if something's there or not. You can make all kinds of wrong, bogus links that don't lead anywhere. The file itself is just a normal file. It's a series of bytes that are stored under that reference. So these, uh, let's say, these character device files, or block device files, we got a device file basically is sort of like a meeting point between the kernel, or rather the driver, and the firmware for whatever thing that is. So let's say this is the hard disk. Well, this is the intersection point. So dev sda1, let's say, is a place where the driver on the Linux side communicates with the actual hardware thing itself, or the code on there, which would be the firmware. And it's the same with character device files. I mean, this is just, this right here is a file that is sort of used to communicate between our actual system, the driver running the, running the mouse driver on our system, and 
the mouse itself. So that is where the mouse writes information, like I'm moving, and where the operating system picks up that information and then does something with it. This is mostly managed uh, automatically now. Uh, these days, basically, the difference between a, the different uh, device files is basically block device files buffer on the kernel. So the kernel provides buffering. For, so the kernel will store sort of some sort of little dump of memory that the uh, the device can then access, uh, whereas these character files just go straight to the uh, to the device, and the device takes care of its own buffering. Okay, that is input and output buffering. Um, sockets, which you don't see here, I'm just going to talk about them very quickly. This is going to be more important if you're actually developing software that uses them, but for you, basically. A socket is just a communication channel that opens. It's only visible to the parties to that communication. So let's say you have, uh, let's say you have an application running that opens a, a socket to communicate with some other application. That is only visible from those two processes. It's sort of a private file, if you will. Likewise, uh, named pipes are something I'm basically going to skip over because you're almost never going to see them. Basically, these two file types, local domain sockets or Unix sockets and named pipes, I've never seen them used. I actually I don't even know that much about them. And to make this video, I had to read a bunch about them that I've never seen or used or known before. Really, you're almost always going to be using network sockets. Like modern applications use network sockets. They open some TCP port, whether it's some high port or a privileged port, and do their thing through a normal network socket. So like the TCP port, let's say they open up. So that gives you a basic idea of the different file types. Officially, there's seven if someone ever asks you, uh, and those would be you know, normal files, just a series of bytes, directories, references to files, uh, character and block device files, so sort of interface files for your hardware, and symbolic links. The, the last two, like Unix domain sockets or local domain sockets and named pipes, are things that are really just legacy, so I'm not going to cloud your mind with them. So there you go, those are the file types, and now you can decipher the first bit when you do a long listing of a directory. In the next video, we'll talk about the rest of these bits. See you there? Oh, and uh, give this a thumbs up if it's helpful.